Amen. Okay, so you must learn to respond to the word of God. Your response to the word of God is going to affect what you get from the word of God. Every Christian who thrives in the kingdom of God is somebody that takes the word of God very intentionally. And so, like the previous man of God said, the way you respond really matters. Now, I'm not saying try to excite me or carry the chair and jump, but I must see that to be focused and really ready to receive what I want to show you. Are we together? Yes, sir. You see, only 10 people said yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, sir. Sister, are we together? Yes. Okay. I pay attention to everybody that listens when I teach, so let's pay attention. All right, I'm teaching this morning, on this afternoon, on the powers of the eight to To be very honest, I'm a Bible teacher, and when you give me a thing like this, it's quite difficult. Not difficult because you don't have something to say, but, you know, one has to stay very faithful to the text to be able to teach it the way that God will be honored and pleased. And so what we'll do very quickly in some minutes is to do some Bible study, and then after that I'll pray with you, and we'll see how the Spirit of God meets us. Let's go Hebrews chapter 6, the powers of the eight to come, Hebrews chapter 6. By the, end, by the way, I'm here with my friend, Pastor Samson. Please let's celebrate Pastor Samson. Pastor Samson. It's a wonderful man. Yeah, Pastor Samson. He always takes care of me anytime I come to Ethan. So anytime he tells me to come somewhere, I want to go because I know that I'll be taken care of. Hebrews, all right, Hebrews chapter 6. We're going to read verse 1. Hebrews chapter 6. We will read verse 1 to 6. Hebrews chapter 6, if you have a Bible, we can read it. If you can be projected, that would be great, but if you cannot, then open your Bible. Hebrews chapter 6, we begin reading from verse number 1. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. Are we, are we reading the Bible? Yes. Now, I want to read it out. All right, congregational reading is also one of the spiritual disciplines that helps the saints to remember what they are learning. So let's start in Hebrews 6, 1. Let's go. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of, number one, repentance from acts that lead to death. I'm using a different version, so I think in James we say repentance from dead works. Is that correct? Make progress now. Number two, and of faith in God. Number three, doctrine, instruction about cleansing rights. Number four, the laying on of hands. Number five, the resurrection of the dead. Number six, eternal judgment. And then it says, and God permitting, all right, this we will do. Let's go to verse four now, read. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened. Wait, now. One of the important things in the Christian life is commitment to learning exactly what the Bible means when it says something. Because what the Bible meant when it was written to the original audience is what it means even in the 21st century. And if there are many more centuries before Christ returns, what it meant will always be what it means. Are we together? That means that there is no civilization or age that can come up and try to modernize what the Bible meant. Why? We are interpreters of the text. We are not the writers of the text. The interpreter is not greater than the one that received the inspiration from the Spirit. Because Peter was writing in First Peter, and then he says, no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For holy men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we are recipients of the text. We cannot do with the text what we like. We must find out what the text meant and then say what it meant. Are we together? Yes, now Paul is teaching here. Okay, when the writer of Hebrews is teaching here, and he says something important. He says it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened. Now what's he talking about? Remember in verse number one, he began to show you what we call the first principles of the oracles of God. Uh, are we together? Yes, sir. Is this not going? Are we together? Yes, sir. All right. So the first principles of the oracles of God. And then those principles is what we call foundations. Is that correct? Yes, sir. He says 
laid again the foundation and then he listed certain doctrines that are essential for the believer in Christ Jesus. What is number one? Uh, uh, uh. I thought I would teach you. Now, if you cannot learn this one, you cannot learn powers of Are you here? Oh yeah, now, number one, repentance. That there is a doctrine in Christianity called the doctrine of repentance. And the goal of the doctrine of repentance is to lead to accurate God accepting repentance. How do we mean? When John the Baptist, which is the forerunner of Jesus, came to the scene, his sermon was one. What was he saying? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, when Jesus came, what did Jesus preach? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. When he sent the apostles to preach, what did he tell them to preach? Preaching repentance. Are we here? Now, repentance is not only a doctrine, it's a doctrine that has to do with the change, change of mind that leads to a change of nature. And that's why the word is metanoia. It means change your mind from the way you have been thinking about God, about the will of God, about the purpose of God, about the intentions of God, and then now subscribe to the standard of God's kingdom. Because you do not decide how God accepts you in the kingdom. God is the king of the kingdom. If you want to be a citizen of God's kingdom, you only come to find out what is acceptable to the king of that kingdom, and you bend and subscribe and succumb to it. Meaning that you cannot decide how you will be saved. The Savior decides how you will be saved. Are you here? Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus. Are you here? Yes, sir. All right, repentance from there. Let's just, there's no need for explanation. Let's just continue. And then the second doctrine. Faith toward God. Notice it's not faith trying to manipulate God. It's not faith trying to use God to accomplish selfish interests. It's not even faith that the new age teaches today and is being smuggled into Christianity. That if you can close your eyes and just imagine it and write it somewhere and, and, and just just imagine you are you're, you're in your car, a fat Jupiter AC, and on your bed in the hotel room. Television is coming out from under the bed, and then tell yourself ten times, I will never go. That's not faith toward God. Are you there? Yes, sir. Number next doctrine. What is it? The doctrine of baptism. <laughs> doctrine of baptism. Baptisms. Now you know that when it comes to baptisms, the, the word baptism there is the word baptism. It has to do with immersion. Now, how many of you did at the end when you were in secondary school? Pay attention, my friends. Pay attention. Huh? How many of you did Adi? How many of you know Adi? Tie and tie. Do you remember? You get clothes, most times white. And then you will take certain colors, mix them together the way you want. And then you will tie those clothes sometimes with stones, you know, giving it different styles. When you immerse it into that, that liquid, what you expect to come out is no more white clothes. Is that true? Because a substance or a material, you know, an object or a material will necessarily take up the coloration of the substance into which it was emerged. Are you here? Meaning that when you put a white cloth in a red dye, what will the white cloth turn to? Red. Now, when the Christian is baptized into Christ, when you look at the Christian, what should you see? Very good. Now, there are many baptisms in scripture. We have baptism into Moses, we have baptism into Christ, we have baptism of the Spirit. Are you here? Yes, sir. Now that's why when John was introducing Jesus, because John also did water baptism. Is that correct? Yes, sir. The Bible says that John was actually a baptizer and the system of baptism was that in a bit to identify the Messiah, that was not the only reason for John's baptism. John's baptism was also an external rite an external action that proved inward submission because it was not only John that was baptizing in his religion in ancient times it was a common thing that the average person knows that there are various religions and various sects that did baptism it was a public identification as a proof of a private submission to a new system of instruction so here John was baptizing men in Jordan River but in Matthew 3 11, John now introduces another personality. He says, Whose latchet of the shoe I am unworthy 
to untie. He says, when he comes, he's going to do something. What will he do? He shall baptize. Yes, or okay, or to okay. that no, 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 no. Ah. Yeah. The Holy Ghost will never force anything on you. I don't need a few of you to respond. If I have a few of you that respond, that's good. That's what I'm going to do. Are we together? Yes, uh -huh. So let's continue now. He says, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and power with a personality and then that which accompanies the personality. He says with the Holy Ghost and power. Meaning that a Christian that receives the Holy Ghost and does not receive power, there is a contradiction in his terms. Because where the Holy Ghost is, power is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Holy Ghost is not powerful. The Holy Ghost himself is all powerful. The Holy Ghost is not... <laughs> I'm tempted to say something, but I am determined not to be saying it again. I wanted to say the Holy Ghost is not one of those that will release power to you. The Holy Ghost himself is all powerful. Because one of the attributes of God we say in scripture is that God is not just powerful like other things can be powerful. No. God is all powerful. All powerful in the sense that there is nothing called power that does not have its foundation in him. Meaning that when demonic power begins to manifest actually, it is still the workings of God, but a demon has corrupted that spiritual substance and is now using it to manipulate. So that's why it says the powers that be, even governmental powers, are of God. Meaning that if it was worry that was leading you and things are not going, we say, is it God that allowed him to be there? Because sometimes God allows certain people to be in power to judge the rebellious. Yes, are you together now? Yes, anyway, so the doctrine of baptisms, and so there are different baptisms in scripture, but that's not where we're going. Continues in, in the book of Hebrews because I need to first establish that what the writer of Hebrews was talking about when we get to the power of the year to come. Before you get there, look at what he was saying before. He's talking about essential Christian doctrines, foundations, and he's now saying, Listen, we cannot again lay such foundations, but if let's make progress, grow on to maturity, and deal with other important issues. But unfortunately, the average person even preaching the Bible does not understand the basics of the Christian life. There are many preachers, many pastors, and many Christians that are convenient and comfortable with Bible illiteracy, and it does not bother them. It does not bother them because they have not learned the value of knowing how to separate the truth from the false. And so everything goes. There is a way I can talk about the powers of the year to come and add to your confusion. But the word of God was not given to confuse the believer. It was given to guide. Are we together? Yes, sir. Hebrews, let's go to the third. Laying on of hands. Laying on of hands. Ah, let's give all that one. Don't worry, that one, if, if the Lord allows, I will show you that one. The laying on of hands, of course, there are about five things in scripture that laying on of hands you know, has to do with. I don't want us that too much into all those things so that we can focus on the power of the to come. But you know that the label of earth in the Old Testament, for example, it was for ordination. It was for confirmation of the call of God upon a man. It was for impartation. It was for ministry healing. Are you together? All of them are still laying on the hands, for example. God said to Joshua, who had the spirit of God, go to Moses that Moses should lay hands on him. And the Bible says, when Moses laid hands on him, he says, from that day forward, Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. What is in hand? What is in I mean, can God say Moses lay hands? He said, lay hands, why? It's a communication of the power of God through a vessel that he chooses. Are we together? Yes, sir. And then, he continues the doctrines, and then, the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of the dead. Now, um, there is a doctrine in theology that is called eschatology. Alright? The word eschatology has to do with the doctrine of the last things, the last things, the final things, for example. Your faith, the powers of the age to come, is actually the text. It's actually an eschatological text because it deals not just with the faith, it actually deals with what is to come. And we are going to get there. Am I blessing you already? Yes, now, pay attention, please. Look at this. It says here that having moved from those foundational teachings, there are things we now need to begin to see. And I want you to look at it very quickly because of our time. Look at what it says here. First of all, it is, because I don't want us to talk on uh, resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. We don't have that much time. Verse 4. Let's read now, my friends. One, two, go. It is in, uh, sorry, is Bible reading a word in 
Oh, is it for Is it a challenge? No. Huh? Oh, yeah, people will be watching you. Just be like this. Oh, yeah. It's not how it's going to respond. Oh, yeah, I'm trying now. One to go. It is impossible. Wait. When you say something is impossible, that means it is what? It's, in, it's not difficult. It's, it's, if it is difficult, it can be done. Are you? If it, is, it, is, if it is impossible, it means it is impossible. Now, let's read what it says is impossible. One to go. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tested the heavenly beings, who have shared in the Holy Spirit. Now, look at the very beginning. Look at the attributes of the kind of men that the writer is talking about. Number one, he says, this one have once been enlightened. You know, Paul was I'm together, please. Okay, then. Paul was writing to the brethren at Ephesus in chapter one, and he was being encouraged by their the, the faith. When I heard of your faith, all right, and I saw you conducted yourself in Christ, he says, okay, I bow my knees and pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And began to pray specific prayers. And then he says, Number one, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. This one, Paul is praying for them that let them gain deeper clarity into the purpose of God. But the one that the writer of Hebrews is talking about, he said they have once been <laughs> They are not looking for... Are you here? Yes, sir. We'll find out if you're here. Number two. The heavenly gift. Now, what do you think the heavenly gift is? The heavenly gift, now, according to scripture, in Ephesians, when you enter chapter 2, the Bible makes it clear over and over, Paul writes that the heavenly gift is the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man help me. Lest any man should boast. I'm not wasting time. Can you sing it? Calling upon the Lord. I'm not wasting time. Receiving the end of your faith. 
which is his salvation, meaning you are saved. You are being saved and you will be saved. The one that predestinated is the one that also calls. The one that calls is the one that justifies. And of course, is also the one that will glorify. Are you here? Are you here now? Yes, sir. Okay, let's continue. I want to teach you this because I don't just want to pray for you. Who has shared in the Holy Look at the wish of the Bible. He says, This one has shared in the Holy Spirit. What does the version say? And were made partakers of Holy Ghost. Partakers of the Holy Ghost. That means that, listen now, listen. That means they are not strangers to the Holy Spirit, are they? No, sir. They are not. Not, I don't have the Holy Ghost. No, no, this one's the argument is not do you have the Holy Ghost or do you not have the Holy Ghost? The argument here is that they have been partakers. And you cannot be a partaker of the Holy Spirit except conviction at one time has happened. You have heard the message of the gospel, you have repented and believed unto salvation. Are we here? Yes, sir. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Now, here is there salvation in any other? There is no name under heaven given among men whereby we should be saved. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 10. The word that we speak unto you, this word of faith, is nigh thee. Are you together? You will believe if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation are, are you hearing this? yes sir since you are partake of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Ghost cannot indwell you if you have not received Christ as Lord listen the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is one of the proofs that you are now a partaker of the divine nature that you are now born a, a. John chapter 3 Jesus speaking to Nicodemus except a man be born in him he cannot see the kingdom of God and except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter are we here? yes sir so look at it I'm telling I'm trying to show you the picture of the kind of people that they are also here is talking about he says they have once been enlightened they are not confused as to what they know exactly what they have received. And he now says here that they have tasted the heavenly gift. And they have partook of the Holy Spirit. But let's not stop here. Uh-huh. What does he now say? Who oh, have uh, read it loud? I want to hear your voice. Please read it loud. One, two, go. Read it together. If it has and that's conjunction. So read it together properly. Like the Bible student. One, two, go. Taste it. Power of the age to come. So notice two things you see together simultaneously. Tested the good word of God. Is that true? The good word of God and then the power of the age to come. Now, for you to be able to taste of the powers of the age to come, it means that you know the God who is the ancient of things. God has an attribute that is called the immutability of God. I think there are science students in the house today. Do you have science students here? Do you know what is called mutation? Yes, sir. What is mutation? Simply. A change in the genetic. It's a change. Mutation simply means change, right? Now, hear me. God is immutable. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16, God speaking, he says, I am the Lord. I change not. That's why you're not consumed. He says, I change not. Meaning here is that his ancient of days does not really mean as old as he is. If he can age, that means he's no more eternal. Okay. Let's amen. Let's just let's just do what we can do. Uh -uh. Amen. Alright, let's talk about the powers of the age come. So when we talk about the powers of the age, I wanted to take it, but you cannot get it. The part of the eight to come, we're not really talking about. Because I know that anytime you don't really understand something, you prefer to use an esoteric language. 
a language that both you and the people that are listening, everybody does not understand it. The powers of the eight to come, I, I, will, I will show you from scripture simply put the things that it, it connotes and then how that we can engage. Are we together? Yes, sir. All right. Read that one together. Three things I want us to look at there. Number one, it says powers. Is that true? Yes, sir. Write it down, powers. Number two, it talks about the age to come. The age to come. And number three, it talks about taste. Alright? Taste, power, and age to come. We have said that to taste is not really to totally swallow. It's to just have a feel of it. Okay, let's give an example. Uh, let me look for somebody that is sleeping. Uh, until you come. You in white and black scarf. Come. You now come. I know you are not sleeping. I want you to come and taste of the powers of the <laughs> okay, no, sorry. Don't taste no, no, you come now. Feel it. Now, is the handkerchief purple? Ah, nobody's answering you. Is it a But is she. Do you know one of you? None of you have felt it. It's not true. But she, she. You see the chance, like the opportunity I give her to feed a man of God. <laughs> and she felt the texture of the material. In fact, possibility exists that I can even give it to her. But guess what? That I gave it to her does not mean that it will benefit her. She can choose to abuse it. She can choose to misuse it. Are you here? In fact, she can even throw it away. Listen. <laughs> Salvation is a gift. Eternal life is a gift. Yes, Jesus is the Savior. The believer is the saved. Yes, the saved can choose to walk away from the Savior. A citizen of a country can lose his citizenship. Yes, Even in Nigeria, come on, Google, you can lose. Yes, mm -mm. Are you here? Yes, ah, a Christian can never lose his salvation. Even if he comes away and tells Jesus, I hate you. You see, once a citizen always is you, you are a, you are a Yahoo. If I give you gold, no matter the carat, although it has become your own, if you if you fall down beside river, the gold can be lost. Is the gold still treasure? Yes, can it be lost? You guys are not it's like this. Oh, yeah. You guys are not. Are you here like this? I'm trying to. who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age are uh -huh, right now and who have fallen away to be brought back. Now look at me now. Pay attention. Look at me now. This is time to teach now. Look at this. Pastor Paul, look at it. You are, now look at the characteristic of the man and the Bible says it is impossible read the attribute of this man now. Why? For those who were once enlightened. Once and so is he an enlightened man? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Only them, them too, eh? Is he an enlightened man? Yes, sir. Number two. And I'm tested of the heavenly. He has tested of the heavenly. So I want you to call yourself and say, I am I am an enlightened man. Uh-huh. I am tested of the heavenly gift. Glory to God. Uh-huh. Conditional statement. Yes, sir. He 
it means that, for example, you know, if somebody offends you, I know before, before you were because of your face, eh? before you were born again, you can write heart. Eh? Man, but do you know that? If somebody offends you, you can say, if I if I do what? If I was you, that's the original word is that. If I meet now, notice he didn't say I he said. Yes, 
father. Nevertheless, God was not what are pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. River six now. These things of God as an example to keep us from what? Setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Meaning, if we do what they did, even if we are chanting in tongues, we will end up where they ended. Are you here? Go to verse 11. Go to verse 11. Read it. These things happen to. Now, I, I'm only showing you the summary. When you read three verses, it's going to say we should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed with, with snakes and do not grow as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. Verse 11. These things happen to them. They were killed. I want to ask you, look up. What killed them? Snakes have been. Who allowed snakes to kill them? God, are you here? Yeah. Ananias and Sapphira, is it Satan that killed them? Uh -uh. Because when Peter was speaking to them, he says, Why did you lie to Satan? Is that what he said? He said, Why did you lie to the Holy God that you follow? I'm saying that God can supervise and will, even ultimately in eternity, supervise the destruction of the wicked. Yes, because part of his love and his holiness is that the wicked cannot go to heaven. The wicked must perish in hell. If the wicked does not perish in hell, what makes them to them? Are you here? Yes, sir. Verse 12. Read. One, two, go. So, if you think you are standing there, be careful. Be careful. Be careful. This doctrine of grace that brings arrogance, even if you are walking near it, people say, people go on Facebook and, you know, there are a lot of theologians on Facebook that are quack. Theologians. Because they do not study their lives. But because the post is open, it sounds deep. Yes, sir. Now, somebody comes on Facebook and says, You see, how can a man that has preached the gospel and has ministered healing to people over the years, he will now go to hell? How can, how will God allow such a man to go to hell now? Does it make sense? <laughs> there will be many good people in hell, sir. Yes, sir. Many, uh, have you seen Muslims that are very nice? Before. Yes, oh, you've not seen people, people that are not Christians, but they're like, wow. Yes, have you seen them before? Yes, you know, some of them will not drink. Some of them will not smoke. Yes, some of them will not fornicate. Some of them will not masturbate. You the Christian, you are still arguing whether fornication is a thing. You are still arguing. This one will not. Common sense, conscience tells them it's not right. Yet, they will still perish because they reject the love of God in Jesus Christ. Are you here? Yes. Second to the verse of time, chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. I'm praying for your land that what false doctrine has done to affect the fire of God in this land. Pray in the name of Jesus that it will be undone. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2. Also, I believe I'm, I'm on track. I know because we didn't discuss about the uh, Advent Grace. Once in, all, in case I'm contradicting you so that you can debate the scripture. But I believe I'm, I'm on track. I believe. Second Timothy chapter 2, look at verse 11 to 13. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. Are you Alright, let's go. One, two, ready. Three. If here is a trustworthy saying, if we die with him, we will also live with him. Hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So let me ask you a question. If you disown the Savior, the Savior because he's so loving, he's a toothless bulldog, he's a tiger in a decorated cage, he's a window dressing, he only blocks and boasts and blasts you, he cannot do anything at all. So he's a Father Christmas. If you disown me, he will still save you. Is that what the Bible says? What does he say? If you disown me, what will he do, sir? So is he his fault? If we stay with him, we leave the boss. Yes, if we walk away, we are we kept by walking away. So if a Christian turns away from Jesus Christ and apostatizes, and then you say it does not matter, he will still reign with Christ. It's not for him, it's just intellectual suicide. Read now, verse 13. Do we like Bible study? Yes, Alright, verse 13, read now. I want to go. If we are what, sir? Faithless. He remains faithful for he cannot disown. Uh, in case you choose to put him. <laughs> now, somebody can twist that verse to me if I am unfaithful. You know, he used to say it in testimony. Huh? Ah, that's my basement. Sometimes I, 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 sometimes I think I need to say, shut up. You can't listen. There's no angel in heaven that is faithful and that is unfaithful and is still in heaven today. today. You know, the record people say that those, those spirits that remember say that they, some of them have been cast under everlasting chains. So you want to continue in rebellion and continue in sin and expect grace to have Paul answered and said, God. Unless it is not the God that Paul is teaching that you are teaching. Unless it is not the heaven that the Bible teaches. Because even now, everyone is nobody and the Christian. Everyone is now in the Christian. The Christian is heaven. When they dissect you and perform anatomical and surgical operations on you, when we open you, we will see heaven. We will see small and large intestine, deep, deep, and huh? is that true? Everyone is in you, but organ. Oh we want to go to where, sir? Heaven, heaven. Uh -uh. Oh, you don't want to go to heaven again? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Then there is a new heaven and a new earth. Are you here? Uh, so no, the Christian, as we, we are not going to heaven. We are heaven. If I, as I am like this, I am heaven. But that's what we are not heaven. Because I don't know where heaven will be a place, a location, a realm. And then you say, I am heaven. Are you heaven? Ask your neighbor, are you heaven? You are not. Okay, just answer. Say you are not heaven. <laughs> Very soon, you say the judgment throne. This is this anti judgment throne. Are you following me? Yes, sir. 
Because I don't know how Sita there can be a power. Are you following me here? I don't know how. Just basic dictionary English. You don't even need design, just English. Are you following me? Yes, anyway. And Christians, well, I can't say Christians again because we have pastoralized the word. But church attending people that have not submitted to Christ and the ways of the kingdom will go there and say, I love this man of God. He's a real man. He's the realest. He's very. <laughs> attention to what the Lord wants you to focus on. You begin to call good evil and begin to call evil. You call evil good. You even call evil comment. This is evil comment. Are you here? Yes, sir. Let's talk about the powers of the evil. The things to come. Number one, the things to come. I give you about eight. There is time. I give you eight. The things to come. Number one, salvation. Salvation. There are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are So the second one, the 
second one. Luke chapter 18 and verse 30. One, two, ready, go. Will fail to receive. You know, let's do 29 so that you are clear. 29 and 30. One to go. Three. I tell you, Jesus said to them, No one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times in this age and in the age to come eternal life. The age. So what is that talking about? A fuller expression of eternal life. That's another thing to come. That's number two. A fuller expression of eternal life. Number three. Oluwa, Oluwa, etomi lama o. Oluwa, Oluwa, etomi lama o. Number three. Number three. Number three. If you start a four. Stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our pain and all our struggles will be no more. We will sit at his table and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore him evermore. And so, number three is future rest for believers. I think I will just stop before. I have it, but I will stop before so that we can pray. I want us to pray. Are you blessed already? Because I like to give you time. I'll stop before you pray. Number four. Romans chapter 8, verse 23. Romans chapter 8, verse 23. I'm in love. I'm in love. With Jesus, I'm in love. I am seriously in love. Romans 8 23. Find out one. Let's see. Romans 8 23. Let's go. One. Romans 8 23. Hey. You know, in 22, it says we know that creation has been growing. In our ministry, that the grace of God, I, I, I did a teaching series, 63 parts teaching series, a year plus, on the book of Romans. We studied the entire book of Romans. Currently, we are studying Revelation. We are in maybe chapter 21. We're almost done with Revelation. You see, when you read this text, eh, let's look at it. See what it says. Creation grows. Creation grows. The spirit grows. The believer grows. That's why when you are reading, you will hear what it says. The endless expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation. Is that correct? Of the water, the sons, and then the average preacher. Okay, let me not talk to preachers. The average person that does not study their Bible says, the creation is now waiting for your manifestation. What manifest? That scripture talks about the millennium. When everything is already over, rapture has taken place. <laughs> but we say, no, if you don't manifest, question is, what exactly do you mean now by money? What do you mean by it? If it is with that text, you can use another text, but not that. That text does not mean what you are putting inside it. Anyways. See, see what it says. Creation grow. Ah, travel. Verse 23. Not only so, ah, but you and me who have the first fruit of the spirit, we grow inwardly as we eagerly await for our 
adoption to sonship command the redemption of our bodies. Oh God, are you saying that I'm not adopted? Once you are saved, you are already adopted. You say there is <laughs> that adoption is like a type. Is a, there is the archetype, the real stuff that's going to take place. He says adoption of our sonship and then redemption. Let's go. What does that tell you? That's number four. The renewal. That's the re- I don't, I gave you the text already. So the renewal of our mortal bodies. I don't have a new body. Will be changed. Let's stay with that. You know, and there are other things like thrones, crowns, dominions. Authority. For example, if you read First Corinthians chapter nine, when you before you are going to see various crowns, the crown of glory, the crown of righteousness. When you study Revelation, you see crowns, even for Matthias, special crowns, and all that stuff. Yes, sir. You know. Yes, sir. A to H, you are still the same. The Lamb of Calvary is seated on the throne, and forever and ever you will reign. We will rejoice. Jesus, 
contagious. Fire is contagious. You cannot mistakenly on a gas and put a ringing phone on it because you feel like taking a picture. Why? You know what fire can do. If your gas is leaking and you enter the house and you smell it, you may run out like this because you know that if you switch on your ball, everyone can be involved. Your Christianity that has roommates are not born again. And they are not even sure whether you are born again. It's a, it's a wood. That kind of Christianity should not expect any reward when they stand before Jesus. In Romans chapter 4, verse 11, it says, No slothful in business. Fervent! Zeal is the word. Maintaining him to the boiling point. Can you put your hand in the boiling water and you will not be affected? Your Christianity is too cold. And that's why we are not seeing revival. But if one person can burn, can burn like John, he was a burning and a shining light, something will be affected in this land. And then it's going to go from person to person, water to export, fellowship to fellowship. Are we together here? Yes, sir. So if you are the type that are still begging you, follow God, pray, then you are not the one we are talking about. We are talking of those who have seen far beyond where they are, that there is a generation that must be rescued. There are people that must be saved, but not like this. Your attitude must change if you will see a change in the things of God in your life. Are we together? Yes, now you are going to pray. If you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you cannot pray in tongues, pray like this and say, Oh Lord. Uh -huh. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Send revival. Send revival. Into my soul. Into my soul. And upon our land. That's the only prayer point. Go ahead and pray.
I lay hands on you. If you sense that I should lay hands on you, it's all right. I want you to come forward. Not everybody, please. And don't hesitate. Yes, take outside. You know your spirit. All right, that's fine. Please stand like this. Very good. Very good. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Very good. Hold your seat.
that the Lord will help me to walk stability. Stability in ministry. Stability, that's health. Health, health in ministry. Health in ministry dimension. The second thing, that the Lord will exalt your own in his power. Lift your throat. My own.